ました。Spectre is haunting the world. The livelihoods of nearly a billion people could be at risk. Worldwide, farmland nearly the size of the United States could turn into a dust bowl. Desertification is on the march. Countries are consuming too much water. The land is being overburdened by too many people, too much livestock, and too many harvests. 2006 is the UN's International Year of Desertification. In this program, the front line is the southern edges of the Great Gobi Desert in China's Inner Mongolia region. Sand from here has blown around the globe, carried by storms so massive they can be seen from space. Two million square kilometers of China, an area the size of Greenland, have turned to desert since the Communist Revolution in 1949. Desperately poor farmers tried to plow land that was too fragile to grow crops. Livestock destroyed what vegetation was left. For some, deserts are beautiful, but creeping deserts are a curse. Desert is a gift from God, right? But、uh, desertification is a disaster from human being. Environmental awareness in a country without a free press and a vocal non-governmental movement is a relatively new phenomenon. But that's changing fast as the new young middle classes begin to see and experience just how great a price China is paying for a booming economy. Jennifer Wang is one of the new environmentally aware. She's 37 years old and a senior manager in a property company, but also a manager of a project here in Alashan designed to stop the relentless advance of the desert. This park we call the Beihai Park was built one thousand years ago. At that time, people start to talk about desertification, and it's been getting worse ever since. That's why I'm going to Alashan. Where the great sandstorm start from, lots of projects are happening there. If they do work, China might have a lot to show the world about how to defeat the creeping desert. This is Jennifer's story. We follow her as she goes to Alashan to find out whether a raft of projects, including one she manages, are pushing back the desert and making people's lives easier. Alashan is south of the Gobi Desert. It used to be steppe grassland. It's supplied with water from the Helishan Mountains. The plateau used to be green, with trees and grass and many lakes and rivers. But the trees have nearly all gone, and the grass is grazed to bare earth. Today there is hardly any water to be seen. Alishan has been a textbook case of how to create a desert. In fact, China is said to have been fighting the desert since the Song Dynasty a thousand years ago. But serious desertification, where fertile land becomes desert through human activity, started in the late 1950s, especially during Mao Zedong's disastrous Great Leap Forward. Villages were forced to cut trees to smelt iron. The push to industrialize took peasants off the land. Traditional practices were abandoned, and food production plummeted. But officials exaggerated the harvest and even exported grain. An estimated 20 million died of malnutrition. Millions more fled in a desperate search for food. The majority Han people of neighboring Gansu Province migrated here to Alashan, where the relatively intact grasslands promised escape from starvation. What's happened in Alashan is typical of how poverty creates desert. The influx of poor people overwhelmed the steppe land. The Han newcomers were farmers used to the plow. The fragile steppe wasn't. Traditionally, all it could support were the camel herds of nomadic Mongols. An inevitable spiral of misuse and environmental destruction started. Crops withered. 
topsoil blew away, and eventually the Han farmers could only survive by rearing sheep and goats. He said uh, he was born here. He just migrant here from his father's generation in 1960s because of uh, a lot of people starving, especially in the area, Minqing, in Gansu. In the past, here was very good. The grassland is, is green. The Saxon trees are very tall. But now more people come here and the surrounding are getting worse and worse. The Saxon trees not really reach maturity. They are cut for a few wood by the increased numbers of people, depending on them for cooking. Yeah, Mr. Yang is a Han. He moved here almost 40 years from Gansu province. He can speak a very good Mongolia, and his wife is Mongolia. In the past years, the, uh, the environment is getting worse and worse because of uh, people cut too many Saxon trees here. He, he said that maybe he he's one of the poorest in the village because um, he said his income per year, annual income, only 4,000 RMB equal to 400 euro. Yang earns only a dollar a day. Most people in his village are just as poor. The generation of theirs, the Nari and Bali, they did not have enough education because of um, poverty, uh, because of poor conditions. Now they just hope their son can be educated very well, and so they put hope on their son.